Welcome back to Reimagine 2020. I'm Yona Hockhauser, and today I'm glad to be joined by Helen High, head of the Binance Charity Foundation, and Vanessa Chuang, project lead for COVID for them. Ladies, thanks so much for joining me. Hi, everybody. It's our great pleasure to be here with all of you. Nice meeting you all. all right. Well, to, to, to start off, uh, Helen, in your first 10 months as the head of the Blockchain Charity Foundation, you've raised more than $3.2 million in Bitcoins, fed over 5,000 children, and delivered aid to over 1,000 disaster victims. That's really, really incredible. Um, for Biden's charity, you know, what unique properties does blockchain offer when it comes to charity? I think there are three things. Number one is the transparency, because currently I think the charity uh, overall infrastructure has been existed since the post Second World War. It actually it, it didn't really change. And the most actually the biggest problem, I would say, lack of transparency and lack of information. And this is something actually, as we all know, blockchain can offer. This is number one. Number two is actually reduce the middle layers and reduce cost. For example, you are sitting in Tel Aviv. Uh, let's say if I'm a poor girl in Africa, if you want to support me $100 for my school fee, actually you cannot actually support me directly. You have to give that actually support to a third intermediary. But then whether you know the third intermediary use that money for my school fee or you use that money for something else, corruption, or maybe just paying for his business flight ticket, you have no idea. So this is actually the peer-to-peer -peer transaction. You know, the second layer, getting rid of the middle layer, which does not require to be there. I think this is actually the efficiency part is a huge improvement. And thirdly, I would say the access, you know, uh, without borders. Uh, the, the, the same example I, I, I just described the uh, early on. You know, with blockchain, we actually limited borders around the globe. Anybody can support anybody. And this is actually building a new world for us. So those are the three major property, actually, I would say, really uh, deeply in my heart. Yeah. Well, those, those three things are, 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 are you know, the, the powers of blockchain, and it's wonderful that we're able to bring it to charity. So let's break those down. In terms of the transparency, this is a huge problem in traditional charity where you're given money to an organization and you have to trust that organization to, to do what they say they will do with it. Uh, when it comes to the blockchain and Binance charity, if I were to give one Bitcoin to a cause, would I be able to then check on a blockchain and see exactly where that Bitcoin is going? Exactly. Wow, that's, and that's that, really incredible. That is the beauty. And that is not just for me saying that. Uh, it's because we know that technology is proven that. Mm -hmm. And I think this is also one of the things is with the society evolvement. I think if I'm looking at a human in the a human history, it's about human industry searching for a good society. But whether it's a communist or whether it's a, a, a capitalism, there's always a man-made infrastructure. But it is that we're now right now in the year actually we are going to blend it with machine to set up a new infrastructure. We don't just trust the human anymore. I think I would say machinery put a new layer of trust and discipline. And that is something that is the common trust going forward. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the second you know, pro that you mentioned was the, the, the cost and the fees. You know, traditional charity foundations they, they do take a, a, a very large percentage uh, in, in administration fees. Uh, how does blockchain and, and Binance Charity, how do you guys get around that and, and, and enable as much of the donations as possible to get to the intended source? Uh, exactly like I mentioned, when you give your money to a traditional charity, there's a lot of third party cost. Number one, the cost there is should be the auditing, auditing fee. You know, people have to make accounts, etc. For us, we don't need any of those services because everything is trackable on the blockchain. You don't need to pay actually huge amount for the big four consulting company to audit your account. Uh, that is number one. Number two, uh, uh, we are the first uh, charity on the day we actually launched. Uh, our founder, CZ, made it very clear. Binance is covering all the administration costs. Uh, for example, uh, my flight ticket, our cost, everything, uh, Vanessa's cost is all covered by Binance. It's, we are not taking a single penny from the donor's money out of it. So you know when you give hundred percent, when you give you know one Bitcoin, 
all that actually go into the end beneficiaries. And then also another example I can give to you. Uh, I don't, maybe I let you have a guess. If you give $100 to a reputable charity, do you know on average how much that's actually end up into a, a, the, the end beneficiary, you know, in the current infrastructure? Definitely, the, way too, definitely way too little, but I'm going to guess $65? No, $25. Wow. That is actually, we're not talking about corruption. That's just the normal actually cost that is involved when we're supporting a third, uh, you know, uh, country. That's actually the cost. But, you know, for the Binance side, as I said, Binance covers all the administration costs, you know, uh, for, for covered from Binance. For example, our lunch for a uh, children project, 93% uh, actually of your money turning become food of children's plate. Seven uh, uh, seven percent of that becoming the local administration cost. We paid for local people, you know, doing the delivery work, etc., administration work. So you can see the difference actually from twenty five percent to ninety three percent. That is a huge difference when you actually gave uh, you know the donation. Mm -hmm. And the third point you, you mentioned, and we, we live in a global world now, and it still costs so much money to transfer money across the world, across borders, uh, and, and blockchain really oh, breaks down these borders. Uh, so what that essentially means is right now, if I want to donate to a charity around the world, I pretty much have to find a local charity, and then they're going to go and they're going to administer it. Do you think now this shift to global charity, to blockchain charity, uh, that makes charity more localized, more closer to the source of the problem, d d what kind of effect does that have now on actually fixing the solutions and the problems uh, you know, that, that the charity is raising money for? Uh, you are very right. I think the current, if you are looking at the current infrastructure of the charity business, you know, there's a lot of money flow from the wealthy countries, you know, the first world, you know, coming down to the third world. But in this way, actually, in the first world and second world, there's a lot of administration costs. You know, what I mentioned, the 75% actually becoming administration costs went back to the first world, you know, uh, paying for a lot of expenses. But you know, the real charity, the, the, the original cost should be the actually the donation fully going into the third world and also supporting the local administration. That's exactly what Binance is doing. 100% of actually of the donation going to the third world and then 93% going to the end beneficiary, 7% going to local administration costs. That's still supporting local economy for the flow. So this is going to be a huge shift. I think if you are looking at the dynamic change from the infra whole infrastructure currently with a technology driven infrastructure. Wow. And, and we can't speak about charity today without speaking about COVID-19. Vanessa, you're your project lead for COVID. So um, I, I'd like to, what, what is Binance Charity? What have they done so far uh, in regards to COVID-19? Yeah, before actually, Vanessa, I just want to jump in one thing, going back to your last question. With yeah. less than two months time since the COVID happened, actually as Binance, uh, you know, we were able to support 26 countries of uh, this global traffic uh, breakdown. We were able to support 26 countries across five continents. That is the final achievement we've achieved really uh, because of blockchain. Go ahead, indeed, Vanessa. Indeed. So yeah, hi, nice meeting you all. And it's really like, I, uh, and uh, I'm really grateful that I could be part of this, com uh, this campaign to support the globe in this global crisis. So as Helen mentioned before, we have uh, like since the beginning of the pandemic, we supported Wuhan, uh, we supported, and then after that we set up a global fund to support all over the world. Um, and by far we have already like to uh, four million dollars and in this uh, campaign and also we have already procured 2.1 uh, million PPE and shipping all around the world saving uh, hopefully uh, more than a million people in this global pandemic um, so in this project it has been really challenging but also meaningful and in this project I could see that um, we are separated by the virus, but in the charity world, especially in our uh, in our projects, I can see that we're more connected than, than ever. Because in this project, we see the support from all over the world, and they don't. It's literally a tech without border, a love without border to support each other. 
And uh, I'm really impressed by it. It's really challenging in terms of communication and coordination, um, but, um, but like I can definitely see more support than ever in this world, uh, in this global pandemic. And then uh, we are supporting each other in this campaign. I'd like to add two more things. Uh, number one, as we know, since the COVID started, all the physical fiat money actually contains disease. So, you know, nobody wants to touch it. So yeah. first of all, this is the showing the beauty of the cryptocurrency. You don't need physical cash anymore. And this is actually, we were able to, you know, uh, uh, transfer values without passing disease. This is a very, very, you know, uh, I would say fact, you know, seeing the disease made, made us to realize, and then we were able to transfer values, you know, that's the first layer. Second layer, because of blockchain, in the past without blockchain, you cannot build trust. You know, if I want to say, I want to, uh, we want to give donations to the United States. How would we know the local people is really giving all those masks, you know, to the end beneficiaries? You know, traditionally, you might want to uh, send an audit team, you want to send a team to monitoring, etc. So that's at a lot of cost. And with the global traffic bro breakdown, that's impossible to do. But this is something the blockchain actually can do. You find somebody and that somebody, if he says he can deliver, it's not just by saying it. Everything is going to be recorded on the chain. We don't need to be there physically to check it. We just check on the technology it's showing to us. So this is something I would say, the whole COVID process, we actually rebuild the trust rebuild the whole trust system and also rebuild the value transfer system. Well, and I think you raise a really, really important point there where traditionally, you know, if, if there was a disaster, they would fly a team down there and because of Corona, you can't. And that builds an even bigger need uh, for this transparency and this trustless system that blockchain provides. It's really an incredible, incredible thing to see, uh, you know, the, the amazing work you guys are doing with COVID-19. But it's not only that, you know, Binance Charity just announced in recent days of a Beirut relief fund campaign following the terrible explosion. Uh, tell me a little bit about what that fund is trying to, 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 to help out with and, and has there been a good reaction from the community? First of all, definitely a very good reaction from the uh, 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 crypto uh, community. And secondly, I think now uh, it's not only the crypto camp community, it's also the traditional charity community. For example, UNICEF and Mercy Corp, those are the traditional large giant. They're actually working together with us, want to see how actually technology could help. Exactly like you mentioned, we're still in this COVID-19 period, how to transfer value, you know, for the donation, and then how to actually raise funding from the donation. In the past, if you want to raise funding, probably you have a local mm -hmm. office, people need to, you know, collect doing that. Right now, around the globe, how can you do that? You are not able to do it. But you know, with Binance, we actually first create a, a, a wallet Everybody, you know, from everywhere, even for one cent, if you care, you can show in that by donating, you know, uh, you know, a certain percentage of your cryptocurrency into the wallet. So this is from collection and also uh, in the percussion stage, when we actually procure the local support, is everything is tracked on blockchain. And then the result is also recorded there. So in this whole process, I would say it's very good feedback from the crypto community. And also we realize the large big giant players also turning realize technology really can help. So they also, I would say maybe in a way to interrupt themselves using mm -hmm. technology now. So definitely I would see that's good news for the industry. Yeah, you, you mentioned a little bit with UNICEF, but have governments and have big uh, charity uh, institutions been reaching out and saying, we're curious about this technology, show us how it works, or even do they want to get involved with Binance Charity themselves? This is a very good question because uh, with any new technology, a lot of people don't trust it, people want to resist it. But, you know, I still remember when CZ asked me, you know, like whether I want to be uh, become me the head of the charity i didn't say yes that was two years ago because i was working in africa in the past so what i said to cz is cz let's actually go to africa let's ask for the leaders you know 
do they welcome this technology? And then the thing really impressed him and also myself is two years ago, actually, we went to Uganda. That's actually our first charity uh, uh, project. We, we went to Uganda, we meet the president of the country. He was 74 years old, old wow. man, right? Clearly not very familiar with technology. So we had a conversation, but we talk about some very basic fundamentals. We talk about the, back to the uh, old, his old time, butter time, butter days. You know, people don't use US dollars, you know? People that exchange cow's milk with chicken, you know? The question we talk about actually why we need currency, you know, we're going back to all those very basic concepts. And then it is when we discuss those concepts, the president, he become very quiet. And then he, then he suddenly said to CZ and myself, he said, you know, my friend, you know what? In this false industrial revolution, like what you said, I don't think Africa should be followers anymore. We want to be in the fronting line. We want to, we have a choice today. I'm inviting you guys to come to my country, to work with my people, to see what this technology can help us. That is one of the, a lot of people ask me why we pick Uganda. Actually, it's a very random choice. The only reason it's not we pick Uganda, is Uganda picked us. It is because the country, they want to be in the fronting line to learn how the technology can help them to change. And that's how actually for Binance we pick project, we actually don't have an agenda saying which country we want to support. It's very much up to the beneficiary, up to the uh, you know, regulator, the country leader, how, what is their openness towards the technology. But we actually open our arm to everybody. Wow. And so tell me a little bit more about your guys' work in Uganda. Uganda, you know, one thing I'm really uh, proud of Binance Charity is because uh, I think when I first came into the blockchain world, I see and I hear a lot of people talking about big visions. That's very nice. But then as I've been working in development in the previous 10 years, I know the real cure is not just about talking about it. The biggest issue is always the last mile solution. So I think the thing I'm really proud about us is, you know, when from the meeting, after the meeting with the president of Uganda, we actually put down a team dedicated living in Uganda for one year solid. And then we actually live and sit with local schools, understanding their true needs. And we can thinking about what exact developing a solution which fitted for them. And then they told us they wanted the children for lunch project. And later on, we met school girls. They told us, you know, they never used tampons in their entire life. Wow. And their sisters that actually have passed away due to that issue because, you know, in their uh, early girls' age, they cause a lot of female you know, uh, hygiene issues. And that's actually why we launched the Pink Hair Token, our first uh, industry impact, a uh, stable token project. All those actually need, it's not because we want to do it, because we live with locals. And then they told us what they need the most, because we know the technology, we're just using technology as a tool, actually, to help them. I think this is a very important uh, thing, you know, focusing on developing the last mile solution and also technology should always serve for people you know technology is should create a value this is something we truly we always truly believe mm -hmm. well you know this tech new technology is, is bringing so many benefits uh, many that you've already mentioned but you know one issue right now is that it's very hard to go uh, and buy food with bitcoin or buy tampons with bitcoin so when Binance Charity actually raises this money in cryptocurrencies. How does it then deliver that, that value to the charities? Are you giving them cryptocurrencies or are you exchanging it for their local fiat or just buying directly the goods they need? How, how does it work? That's a very good question. The problem cost not able to achieve that, like what you said, I cannot use crypto to buy an iPhone today. Because why? Because iPhone shop don't accept crypto. 
and then and then because not everybody actually have a crypto uh, uh, wallet. So this is the fundamental issue is the basic layer of the infrastructure. And then today, I think when we're talking about development issues, one of the biggest problem issues actually is financial inclusion. We're talking about the bottom billion people. We're talking people actually putting billions of money in the past several centuries uh, give to in, uh, with the aim to support the bottom billion. But the problem, the bottom billion are still very poor. But the biggest problem I think is the bottom billion people, they don't have the infrastructure. And then in this fourth industrial revolution, it's very important. First, we, we need to create the infrastructure for the bottom billion people. For ev without this infrastructure, everything we talk about it is not going to be sustainable. And then for what we did, in Uganda, in this whole process, we, the, this basic layer of the infrastructure, we have to empower local people with crypto ID, crypto wallet. We have in this land for project, uh, project, we have, you know, people, local people saving, uh, uh, selling the vegetables, selling the rice. We actually need to teach them how to use crypto and open a crypto wallet for them on their phone. So we actually, we did a lot of education locally. So in April for our project to ben uh, uh, benefit more than uh, 100,000 people in Uganda, we actually opened more than 100,000 crypto wallets for people wow. on the ground. So this, and we believe building this first layer of the infrastructure is very important because they can use it for a charity purpose. They can use, also use it for other purpose. For example, if I'm a girl uh, in Uganda has been uh, given a crypto wallet, re receiving the uh, crypto for lunch project. And then if I have a relative in Tel Aviv, you can actually transfer your Bitcoin to me directly. I can pay, you know, like, um, because we're also in Uganda set up a fiat exchange, you know, mm. local exchange. They can actually change the uh, Bitcoin to local currency, pay for the school money. And in the school, we also open a crypto wallet. So they can even actually transfer from my local wallet to the school, pay for the school fees. So this is the thing, I think what we did in Africa, is not just about giving food, giving tampons, it's about creating the basic layer of the infrastructure. It's actually for the future revolution for blockchain. This is very powerful. And I think that is the most important thing we should uh, service for the industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's, there's so many amazing good causes around the world that, that need help. How does Binance Charity decide which causes to give to and how much to give to each cause? Uh, very good question. As I mentioned, we actually don't have a big strategy. What our strategy is, we want to uh, you know, empower people. We believe in blockchain technology. So first of all, when we choose partners, when we choose project, we want to work with partners uh, you know, uh, and project. People are also having the sharing the same value, sharing the same belief. They believe crypto can help them. So this is why, like for example, in Uganda, we went the first school we went actually, the schoolmaster, he was he's Ugandan, but he got educated in Oxford University in the UK after his education. He wanted to, you know, make a difference, you know, in Uganda. So he left a good salary in the UK, he returned to Uganda. So he understand the blockchain technology. So when we actually decided to pilot, you know, the project in Uganda, he he's the first one came to us saying, hey, I want to become your partner to pilot in my school because I believe in it. This is how we choose partners. We choose partners truly believe in the technology because we believe uh, we all industry shapers. And then we need to shape the industry tech together. So having the fundamental belief uh, is very important. Mm -hmm. and, and, and one of the most exciting things to come to blockchain recently is DeFi, decentralized finance. Uh, and with it, DAOs and, and governance tokens. Has Binance Charity considered um, kind of decentralizing even the decision process? 
issuing governance tokens, becoming a DAO to, to let the community kind of decide where the funds go? Very much so. I'm very open to all those directions. And I, and I also hope, you know, more people can reach us with more ideas. Because I believe actually, uh, when we first set it up, we call it Binance Blockchain Charity Foundation. Actually, BCF stands for Blockchain Charity Foundation. We think it should belong to the industry. It's not just belong to one institution. Everybody should use it. So I think with the technology involvement, I'm definitely seeing a future is becoming a very decentralized charity platform. Mm -hmm. and, and so far we've mostly spoken about using blockchain to transfer value, you know, uh, tr uh, tr um, transparently uh, across borders cheaply and without the middleman. But uh, is there any other benefits or any other uses of blockchain in charity Besides the actual transferring of value, you know, for, for, for example, using blockchain to track a supply chain, um, you know, for, to, to help a charity or, or even to help organize and track things. Uh, is there other uses in blockchain for charity besides transferring money? Uh, definitely. Uh, I think uh, like what you mentioned, you know, track for supply chains. Uh, that is definitely usage. And also, I think there's a lot of usage uh, we're also seeing. Uh, now we also, uh, there's some other project, maybe Vanessa can talk about, you know, we're now also exploring uh, for insurance. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Vanessa, I'd love, to, I'd love to hear about that. So go ahead. Uh, for insurance, and uh, for example, like in countries where a cryptocurrency might not be available, we could leverage blockchain uh, as a tool to help the govern the, the organization to improve the transparency. For example, uh, there is a project we're working on, but we have, it has been confidential at this point, but we'll love to uh, let the public know soon. So basically we are establishing last, last mile transparency uh, uh, instrument for the government, the, to the NGO to uh, help them uh, to basically work as the validation tool for the end beneficiary, for example, the charity might donate a certain amount to the uh, NGO and then the NGO to the end beneficiary, but we are given choice, uh, we are being given chances for the end beneficiary and, uh, but, and the NGOs and set up multiple nodes to validate all this project and making sure that their services are received and then the, the monies are well received and then uh, the whole change were tracked on the blockchain and it could be public, uh, to be shown to the public. So we're piloting this project in China and hopefully, and uh, this could be a good example both for the industry and also it could be good best practice for uh, also the charity practice. So yeah, this could be a very good example to see how we could uh, expand on uh, in other projects. And this is also a good direction that we go for because we know that as you said before, modern donation, uh, blockchain itself is a fundamental uh, like tech for good. So we're hoping that this is the direction we go for it and we use this technology to empower the whole industry and also uh, any parties that are interested in this technology. Yeah, and the other thing I want to say is also thinking about the future. I think get rid of the middle layers is very, very important because we go into the, the, the future I see. Now, first of all, I believe data is the new currency. We should own our own information in this case. For example, if I'm a poor girl, you know, in Africa, uh, the information about my age, uh, currently, if, I'm, uh, if I get a Facebook account, actually, uh, I didn't benefit from putting the information there. It's the enterprise Facebook being benefited, you know, from the marketing company. But why shouldn't I get a share of it? So why should be Facebook? So in the future, I think in the data should be the new currency. We should own our data. And if everybody's using my data, they should, they, I should get a reward on that. There should be a true uh, value transfer to me. So I think uh, blockchain should enable this. This is very important. And the second thing is uh, what I talk about, get rid of the middleman. You know, uh, in the case, you know, why we need Facebook there, if I'm passing information there, should there be some uh, system, you know, 
for me, the marketing company paying if you use my information should revolve to me directly instead of intermediary. And then in the insurance, as we know, insurance company, uh, if the insurance, the fundamental, how the insurance started, insurance started as a mutual insurance, a group of people, you know, they all put one dollar in in the event you know something happened all the pool of the money go into one person so they're actually supporting each other you don't need actually a company in here but the reason company existed because make sure you know there's no dispute uh, you've got a contract everything's proper covered but then if all of the things can be done by technology itself you know and also automatically without cost the money the company are making will be passed on actually to the recipient. So getting rid of the middle layers, I see that's a huge change because we are looking at the third industrial revolution. For example, today, uh, 20 years ago, you and me would go to shopping mall to buy stuff. The shops actually pay uh, the rental as a huge cost. But today, in for example, in China, everybody use Taobao, Alibaba, we don't even need to, during COVID, we use Amazon. We don't even go need to go to this, uh, the store. That and then basically we get rid of the property owners in a way with the online shoppings. But now I think there's so many industry, there's particularly the financial industry, there's so many middle layers existed that are taking a huge potential and profit into it. But whether those profits should more go whether go into the manufacturer or maybe for in the recipient we should really reconsider that so i think this is all of those things could um, blockchain technology could really interrupt mm -hmm. and that's so exciting to hear that you guys are also focusing on the infrastructure of providing the infrastructure those nodes to charities who want it and need it i mean you guys already have the expertise there and i think that's that's very wonderful um, uh, to, to give as well. Uh, and, and a question that I had is that traditionally, you know, governments, uh, you know, when people give a lot of charity, most governments, they, they give you tax breaks. They, they, you know, if you give charity, it helps with the taxes. Uh, do you feel that, that governments have been uh, positive and pro um, charity on the blockchain so that things are not open for the charity giver, but also for governments could also track to see who's actually giving charity and to make sure that they're complying with taxes and regulations? Uh, I see actually there is no general answers because country varies, uh, varies, right? Different country have different kind of attitude, but I'm definitely seeing a growing attitude from government, you know, becoming more pro to the technology. Uh, I think COVID is also a big push from that perspective. And then, also, secondly, I think whether we like it or, or not, revolution is inevitable. This is really going to be coming in the future because we're seeing whether the government like it or not, the, at the new generation and also the, uh, the, the, the bottom layer of the population realize eventually they can be benefited from it. So this is really, uh, I would say the revolution is inevitable. And also I think the problem why regulator didn't becoming so active in the past, uh, my view is they don't understand the technology. This takes time, mm -hmm. but while time involved, more and more regulators, you know, becoming, you know, uh, familiar with the technology, willing to learn, and also this really going to open new doors for a lot of countries. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I've never been to China, so I don't know how it goes there, but I know for sure in America and in Israel, the, the most interaction regular people have with homeless people uh, and poor people, they're not hanging out with them, you know, uh, you know, at a restaurant, their interaction is on the street. You know, you're, you're walking down the street, you're going to shop and you see someone in need. You see a poor person living on the streets. Uh, how do you think, you know, the, the, as, as the future moves more remote, as we work from home, as we do our shopping, like you said, from Alibaba uh, and, 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 and Amazon shopping remotely, and the regular person starts interacting with the poor people, with the homeless people less and less, how do you see that affecting 
um, you know, the donations and, and, and the, the knowledge that people have about the lower class uh, that they don't really get to see so much? That's a very good question. If you ask me, um, what's the current problem in the world? I think actually with the third industrial revolution, you know, with internet revolution, the world didn't become a better place. Population is holding 99% of the global wealth. It's not only the, the poor people layer, also the middle class, also getting poor relatively, you know, among the rich people. That actually, in terms of the whole third industrial revolution for the last 20 years, that's the world become. So I believe the, the, the origin of the fourth industrial revolution, blockchain, in a way trying to correct what's the true intention of the internet. Because the intention, I think the in, internet itself didn't meant to becoming, you know, 1% of the people becoming super, super, super rich. So I think the world should be coming more flat. So this is one of the things about blockchain. We should be coming more, you know, um, eco world. Mm -hmm. So that's if you ask me in the next 20 years, is in the charity place, the whole revolution about blockchain, you know, I think the world should be coming more even in terms of the wealth distribution. Clearly, there still will be differences, but I think fourth industrial revolution, if the blockchain uh, technology is going to be driven by the right people, the right industry shaper, it should drive the technology to reshape the wealth distribution. And this is why actually going back to the fundamental mandate of Binance charity, we think, you know, we don't need to become Bill Gates to save the world. Actually, on day one, you know, when we first started, we want to actually use technology, use the things we've got, also use the platform to help the bottom layer because we believe the world should be coming more flat. Mm -hmm. And you know, we have, we have many students from around the world watching this. Uh, what advice would you give to students who, who want to help and they want to use blockchain for good causes? Very simple. Implementation, implementation, and implementation. <laughs> you know, you can have a lot of good ideas, and, uh, but I would really say, just do it, try it. If it doesn't work, try again, keep trying. And this is also the Binance, you know, uh, you know our, uh, uh, our, uh, our core DNA, keep trying, you know, as an industry shaper, you cannot, you never guarantee you have an idea it's going to work, but keep trying it. And keep, while you are trying, you are going to actually knowing a lot of friends, sharing the same value, and then you keep learning. The, the, this kind of cultivation, you know, is very, very important. So with the young people, I truly believe every generation, I have every generation's duty. Um, you know, I believe the world is going to become more flat and this is the, the, the responsibility and our shoulder. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we, we spoke so much uh, about blockchain and you guys mentioned how you guys are, are providing education, uh, blockchain education uh, about how to use the wallets, how to use crypto. Uh, do you feel that education is there yet and, and, and how will, how should we educate the world? You know, me and you and Vanessa, we understand blockchain, but so much of the world, it's so new, this technology, they don't understand it. How do you feel we should educate the world about how to use blockchain and how to use cryptocurrencies? I think successful, quick successful examples are the most powerful thing. You know, in Uganda, we didn't go in there to teach people saying, hey, this how amazing this technology is. Actually, we first did with the school, you know, uh, on the Children for Land project. When the children notice the difference, they have food on their plate. There's a huge, they used to come to school with empty stomach. When they are seeing food and they want to know why they are getting food. And then we explain to them, you know, like, what is this project? who's helping you, and then we show them in the computer, you know, everything. And then, you know, like just a few weeks later, we've got students, young, uh, young African girl and boys come to us saying, hey, you know what? I want to learn more about this. This mm -hmm. makes my life different. 
And this, I believe this is the most powerful thing. Instead of big talkings, just make things concrete things, you know, change people's life. And this is the best way for people willing to learn. And then people will grow up with it. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it seems so amazing. I mean, anyone who, who, who watches and looks what you guys do, see that it, there is so much, so much benefits to, to doing charity through the blockchain uh, just because of all the reasons we mentioned. But has that pissed off traditional charities, big charities that, that have kind of survived because they get to keep so much administration fees and, and so many people have become rich from running charities uh, have you have you felt pushback and anger from the traditional charities? Uh, I guess there's always, but I think you know, there's a famous saying: a lion should never care about the opinion of the sheep. <laughs> well, tr truly, yeah. tr well, truly, Binance Charity is a lion. You guys are doing so much good and raising so much money. Helen and Vanessa, thank you so much for joining us and and giving us a little bit insight into how the charity works and and how people could help out and cause. And one, one last thing before, before uh, uh, I let you guys go, uh, if there's one cause that you both believe in, you guys could each take a turn, one cause that you really believe in that you wish people will go out and donate now and help to, what would it be? I would say the pink hair token. I really care, you know, about, you know, the young girls, you know, being a girl myself, uh, I can imagine if, if I, if I was born in different part of the world, my life would be totally different. So when I go there, I really want to make a difference to those mm -hmm. girls. And I think if there's this, this actually with pink hair token, uh, how much they actually need to, to save a girl for a dollar, four wow. dollar uh, equivalent. Wow. You can save a, one girl for one year's tempo. I think that's how you really change somebody's you could save a girl's life. Wow. For me, from an advocate background, yeah, that's impressive. I, yeah. yeah, yeah. And for me personally, I would say sustainability. But at this point, I would say after working with financial for a while, I see that the power of uh, technology and how it shaped the world. So I would say, if anyone want to donate, I would say education, especially technology education, to get people to know more about the power of these goods, and that we could uh, leverage these tools to to make a better world together. Well, thank you so much, Helen and Vanessa, for all the amazing work you guys do and for sitting down with us and, uh, and educating us uh, on, on how we could help out more. Thank you so much. And for all of us at Reimagine 2020, I'm Yona Hockhauser. Thanks for watching.